Today, two years ago, a video was created called the Teeth 2 Graveyard. This video discussed the past influences of the Teeth 2 community, who have either moved on to other games or disappeared off the internet entirely. This video was very thought provoking, but the creator of this video actually joined the graveyard themselves and haven't posted for over a year. So much has changed since the video was posted, and I mean a lot. So in this video, we'll be taking a blast into the past and reflect exactly what happened to these creators two years later, and also discussing some other creators who have joined the graveyard. Although Crimson hasn't posted in over a year, I still would recommend you check out his channel and support him, as he made some really good content. The first channel Crim looked at was Sir Stranger. Here's what Crimson had to say. Now, Sir Stranger is an interesting case for me personally. I used to watch his stuff all the time. He was even one of my many inspirations to take my channel more seriously. And then he just left. No real warning either. He was just a spy main known for playing on competitive YouTuber teams with the other half, Lady Stanger and making videos about his personal thoughts and feelings about topics surrounding TF2, whether it be about recent updates or even how casual is better than quick play. Sir Stanger had a fairly short career on YouTube, having started way back in July 3rd, 2016, and uploading his last video on June 30th, 2018. Yep, just a few days shy of a two year long career in the TF2 community before completely disappearing. Unless you're on Twitter. Then he's there for some reason. A year after, Sir Stranger began to try and revive his channel. He did this by attempting to post variety content, but none of these videos really gained any traction. And instead of growing, he actually lost over 3,000 subscribers. On June 18th, 2020, he stopped uploading altogether, and we are yet to hear a peep. <laughs> Now here's one that will hit home, Crunchy Knot. Let's see where he was back in 2019. If there's one person that comes to mind when I think of the good old days of TF2, it's most definitely Crunchy Knot. Well, okay, there's like two other guys that come to mind, but we'll get to them. See, here's the thing. Crunchy was a very unique TF tuber in the case that he did the toxic player character right. Unlike a particular zit, which I'll get to very soon, Crunchy could act like the biggest toxic asshole while being the funniest guy in the room, and even inspired some of my sense of comedy, whether that be for better or for worse. Crunchy was one of those guys I was really bummed to see go, and I mean, yeah, he was one of those guys who was trying to jump ship to Overwatch when it first came out, but he was really one of those guys who was much more strong in the personality side of things. Plus, I, I use his hit sound. It's a really good sound. Well, this one is rather depressing. Now yes, Crunchy Knot did post a few videos after the Teeth 2 Graveyard video was posted, and it seems like he was going to come back to Team Fortress 2 or just post random games. But on the 1st of April 2021, Crunchy Knot deleted all of his videos, except for one strange Fortnite video featuring a young kid talking about YouTube and his mother. Now I'm not sure if anyone really knows what happened to him, but he obviously doesn't want to continue with YouTube, and that's really sad. But one video I do remember in particular from him is when he went with the Phlogistinator and got like 100 kills streak. It was insane. Now, you might remember a TFT YouTuber called Salty Fish back in the day. Well, here's what it was up to in 2019. Salty Fish was one of those TF2 veterans that was prevalent in the community during TF2's prime, like a Ray 7 or Crutchy Knot. He was another spy mate, but he was very unique in the fact that he didn't take himself very seriously, unlike most other spy mains out there. Now, Fish started out as your average Epic Gamer 2013 YouTuber before he uploaded his first Team Fortress video back in July 21st, 2013. But you all know how the story ends. Fish soon jumped ship when Overwatch came out when everyone overhyped it as the TF2 killer and just became another generic Overwatch YouTuber. But it looks like he's even quit Overwatch as well since his latest upload was a Smash Ultimate video, at the least at the time of this recording. Now, Salty Fish is still making Overwatch content, mixed with a bit of Valorant as well. He is very successful and averages over 100,000 views per video. Even though he's not making Team Fortress 2 content, I think we just all need to be really proud of where he's come from and where he currently is right now. He's in an excellent position and this all started with TF2. <laughs> Now, Joma has to be one of the most nostalgic YouTubers to ever bless the community of Team Fortress 2. But here's what happened to him in 2019. Now, you didn't think I was gonna leave out this guy, did you? Of course not, because I foreshadowed him, you fucking stupid. The guy who the scout was possibly named after, of course I was gonna talk about German 985 the most naturally funny and interesting TF2 YouTuber in the whole 12 years of Team Fortress 2's existence. Yeah, I'm a bit of a fanboy, and, and yes, I know he does streams on Twitch and uploads on his second channel, and yes, I know he still occasionally plays TF2, but I'm talking about his time when he was a full-time TF2 big guy, you know? Anyways, Germa's first video to YouTube was, of course, a TF2 video uploaded on June 11th, 2011. Then, for the next four years, him and his best friend, who we'll get to in a bit, made some of the best TF2 content to grace the community. I mean, when the memes that they made are still being referenced to this day, I'm sure you've heard of most of them, the most famous being THE PIRATE SPY! <laughs> I'm Pirate Pyro. But 
all good things must come to an end eventually, which is exactly what happened on September 5th, 2015, when Drema uploaded his last TF2 video as a TF2 YouTuber. Now, he's still a great content creator, and he even respects his roots as a massive contributor to TF2's community, unlike his friend, but again, we'll get to him in a fucking bit. But his days as a TF2 YouTuber are long gone, and I wish him the best. Well, surprisingly, not a lot has changed with Jerma, aside from the extra 100,000 subscribers, of course. Jerma is still mostly sticking to streaming and doesn't really play Team Fortress 2, but he is very, very, very present in the Team Fortress 2 meme culture. And when I say that, I mean he's a staple of half of the memes that exist. <laughs> Now Star is already one that we have a big change for, and actually an update quite recently, but here's what was going on for Star in 2019. Okay, so a lot of people look back on Stir with nothing but happy memories and for good reason. Just like Jerma, Star made a lot of famous TF2 memes and a lot of his collaborations with Jerma made TF2 much more fun than it already was. When I think about what feelings I would get after watching a Star video back in the day, it would be pretty close to the feelings I get watching Lazy Purple's videos now. I'd laugh, then I'd want to play TF2. His outlook on the Gunslinger, back before it was patched, made playing Hightower on quick play into a long, painful session of mini-century c*** and ball torture. And the previously mentioned Pirate Spy meme? That was featured in a Star video. I think that meme is the only reason why anyone bought stamps for the World Traveler, honestly. Now, you might be wondering why I didn't mention that the Pirate Spy meme came from a Star video when I was talking about Jerma. Well, that's because most of Star's funniest content was riding off of the back of Jerma's comedic chops. Most of the memes that Star created were really from Jerma, and Star would get all the credit. And don't even get me started on the Jerma is mad series. Other than that, I want to mention the downward spiral that Star went down after he quit TF2 back on October 8th, 2015. I mean, how could we forget such gems as... TF2 is dead. This is the new TF2. I will never play Team Fortress ever again for the rest of my life unless they come out with the third one. Ooh, or even that time in that April Fool stream where he just shit on TF2 the whole time and then got DDoSed? And we can't leave out that time that Uncle Day made a two microsecond long joke about good old Stir in his Gunslinger video, and then Star got into such a boomer rage that he had to write a response to Dan on fucking Reddit to save his ego. We also shouldn't forget that Star cut ties with Jerma for like two years over a fucking DND session. Can you see why I don't think too highly of Star anymore? Star started making videos back in the beginning of 2011, before TF2 was free to play, believe it or not, and had a four year long career before declaring himself washed up and leaving TF2 in 2015 to become an Overwatch streamer shortly thereafter. Now, here we get to a part where I don't really agree on. I think Star was actually a really, really funny guy. I don't really think he had to rely on Jerma for all his jokes or comedy. Although he has done some things that people would call toxic or petty, considering the situation he was in, I really do think we need to put ourselves into his shoes. Star's always gone through a lot, and it's not easy having the fame that he had. I really enjoyed his non tf 2 content, and for the most part, he's been doing the same thing since Crimson's video, posting variety content with little to no TF2 content. Well, this was up to January the 9th, 2021, when Star posted the video that broke many hearts of the TFT community and really woke up a lot of ignorant people in our community. I'm talking about Star's video titled What Happened to the Old Star, where he discusses the very sad situation he was in and how he was mistreated by the TFT community. <laughs> Now, I personally think RT Game was one of the most successful people in this entire video. And I'm not talking just stats wise, I'm talking that he's doing what he wants and is achieving his goals. Anyway, here's what he was up to in 2019. I'm gonna be honest, I don't know what to say about this guy. I. He was pretty popular as a TF2 content creator for a while. He started way back in 2011, stopped in June 21st of 2018. Uh, then he did a Fallout 4 video, and now he just kind of... Now he's just a YouTuber that has like over a million subscribers. He's Irish, I guess. Oh boy, is RT Game a success story and a half. Currently, RT Game has 2.6 million YouTube subscribers and 1 million Twitch followers. That's just insane. Now, RT Game mainly streams variety content and posts his stream highlights onto YouTube, where they get hundreds of thousands of views to heck, even millions of views at a time. Looking at RT Game now, I can't help but smile knowing that I used to watch his TF2 content and knew him when he was a smaller channel. Oh. And by the way, he's still Irish. Sin has a rather happy story, but it wasn't always this way. Things were very different back in 2019. In fact, here's what was going on. Now how could I leave out one of the most famous cases of a TF2 content creator just randomly disappearing? Now yes, there have been whispers that Sin might come back, but man, it's almost been two years now. Hard to believe, honestly. And I'm pretty sure Sin has the oldest channel on this list since his first video is dated way back on December 16th, 2009. And since that point, he specialized in featuring submitted content from around the TF2 community of funny moments or even some amazing plays. Sometimes he'd even show content of his own. Back when I was an edgy 13-year-old, I used to hate Sin's content, but now I really miss it. 
I think his videos really helped unify the community and give it a bigger voice. Plus, watching the card on payload have a stroke mid-game is just mwah, pure art. Well, as many of you know, Sim was back to posting monthly TF2 content, although he still promotes some sketchy sites in his videos, which I don't personally agree on, but I guess anything for the bag. It's amazing to have him around, and his content brings a lot of value to the TF2 community. Now, his content has not changed at all, and it still has that classical Nissel charm to it, which I just love. However, a channel his size, I don't know why he's still taking sponsorships from gambling sites. Karma Charger Good old Karma Charger. You know the guy who shows off all the cool custom TF2 weapons, as well as some of the maps as well? This is another one of those guys who has changed an absolute ton over the past two years. So here's what was going on back in 2019. Trust me, it was crazy. Karma Charger was possibly one of the most unexpected losses in the community. I mean, he pretty much was the TF2 wiki. He did countless weapon demonstration videos for both the TF2 wiki and just for fun. But just out of nowhere, he couldn't do it anymore. He took down all of his videos, so now if you want to go to the TF2 wiki, it's just unavailable videos for more than half of the item weapon demonstration videos. Karma was possibly one of the most important content creators in all of TF2 history, and now he's just gone. Now granted, he left for a good reason, as he talked about in his last video, but I just wish he hadn't deleted all of his videos, you know? Either way, I wish Karma the best of luck in his future, and I'm sorry he put himself through all this stress and pain to make us happy. Too bad he uh, became Healthy Charger and is now uh, harassing people who are trying to re-upload his old videos under the guise that the videos might make people addicted to video games? Now that was already a crazy story to begin with, with him changing his entire channel to a health channel, deleting all his videos, but things took an even bigger twist when his YouTube channel got hacked. Hacked for several weeks in fact. This was an event which shook the entire TF2 community. Karma did not actually have access to his YouTube channel for a long time, and it suddenly started posting CSGO videos. Fortunately, Karma Charger got his channel back, and since then, he's been back to posting his regular TF2 content, and it's almost as though nothing has changed over the past 5 years. He's also still fairly successful, averaging around 80,000 views per video. Xenomite or Minozit story is a rather sad story, but here's what was going on back in 2019. Seriously, you guys thought I laid into Star pretty hard. I've been wanting to talk about this self-loathing asshat for a really long time. See. At first, I thought Xeno was a breath of fresh air for TF2, you know? A content creator is not afraid to put a mirror up to the community's face and point out TF2's glaring flaws. Plus, he had some pretty valid criticisms about TF2 and Valve back in the day when he started blowing up. That was, until all of his criticisms were being addressed by Valve and the TF team during Jungle Inferno's launch. After that, he just started becoming a nitpicking and whining asshole about everything TF2 related, and his whole thing about him being a character kind of fell apart when, in his own streams, he was acting like his little character that he talked about. He even turned around and made a video about how Jungle Inferno was a disappointment after declaring that he was quitting TF2 just a couple months prior to the update's launch. Oh yeah, I should point out that his quitting TF2 video was a sponsor video, just to really hit the point home that this guy was actually an and it wasn't just a character. I also find it kind of funny that he was going to make YouTube his full-time job right before announcing that he was quitting TF2, and then when he saw how his views and sub count were tanking, he made like three more TF2 videos after quitting. Now I think he had to go back to his old career of being a cashier at his local Wendy's because he hasn't uploaded in two months since his last video about fucking Switch controllers. Ugh, oh, how the mighty have fallen. No, but in all seriousness, Xeno was actually a huge inspiration for me back when I was starting to take my channel more seriously in 2017. And now I'm at like 26k subscribers and I have no clue what the fuck I'm doing. Well, unlike many other creators, things definitely did not get better. He still doesn't post content and heck, even lost 3,000 subscribers. And all but three of his Patreons have left. Now, although his content was kind of toxic, there was still an audience to be entertained. And when he left, he left a big gap in the TF2 community. Saucepan. Yet another sad story. A story that many of you have probably just never heard of. Anyway, this was Saucepan. You might not even really recognize Source just by his name alone, but if you were in the community a few years back, say circa 2016, you might have actually seen some of his videos were posted on sites like Instagram or Tumblr. This black box is mine, and this conscientious objector that demos uh, the size tonight. They're mine, 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 mine. Yeah, Source was basically a TF2 meme account on YouTube, but he was an all-around chill guy. And it's a massive bummer to me that he lost interest in the whole scene, but honestly, I 
don't really blame him. Well, now things are just a little different. Okay, maybe more than a little different. So Spence's entire channel has been rebranded to Obama Gaming, and it's been four years since he's even uploaded anything. And those four years have felt like an eternity. I think it's pretty crazy how his entire channel's just turned to Obama Gaming now. But hey, maybe we'll come back in the future. I guess we'll never know. <laughs> Icon Icona was a creator that you could compare to Muzok back in the day, producing very successful gameplay videos. But here's what happened. Just like RT Game, Icon Icona was one of those crazy popular content creators that I never really watched or even really understood why they were popular in the first place. I'm not saying that they were bad, I just didn't see the appeal honestly. Icon Icona made TF2 videos, and then he just jumped on the Overwatch bandwagon and disappeared. Uh, yeah, quit TF2 for Overwatch and hasn't uploaded in two years. Welp guys, I can't really say anything's changed, I mean aside from losing 15,000 subscribers, Icona Kona hasn't posted in, in 4 years, and at this point this is just really feeling like wasted potential. Now unfortunately, there's been even more creators who've seemed to just lose interest in Team Fortress 2, or have just left the face of YouTube altogether. The first, and most noticeable to me, that I would like to talk about would be Doomsday or EXE, a TF2 YouTuber who blew up as fast as they fell off. Now for me, this one really hits different. I've always liked Doomsday, I've always been rooting for him. Heck, we even collabed back in the day. Doomsday was mainly a drama based TF2 YouTuber, and he posts expose style videos featuring bad actors in the TF2 community. Doomsday grew a massive following of 40,000 subscribers before he disappeared. His last video was regarding the source code leak, telling people to uninstall TF2, and this was a year ago and he hasn't posted since. Now, my personal belief for the reason that he left was the fact that he wasn't actually an artist, and many people stopped recognizing him as an artist and started looking at him as a TF2 drama YouTuber, and I personally understand how bad that would feel for him, especially with the amount of talent that he had. But now, he's doing many side projects, such as this side project where he's looking at uh, CCTV cameras. Not really sure what that's about, but it's, it's pretty interesting. He's still active on Twitter, and overall seems like a pretty cool guy. Another YouTuber who comes to mind would be Misk, formerly known as Marga, before the whole Trump thing. Misk was a very popular TF2 YouTube channel, who actually helped me out a lot when I was a smaller creator. Seriously, this guy put me in his recommended channel list when I only had like 500 subscribers. He was a legend. Misk became painfully inactive on YouTube, mainly because of high school, but as of recent, he tried to start posting more videos, but didn't get close to the amount of views that he used to get. I feel like this could have been off-putting for him, but he hasn't been posting since. But if they ever do come back to TF2 YouTube, they would have my full support. Now, last Last but not least, what would this video be if I didn't mention Muzok? Recently, Muzok has actually been showing some support for Team Fortress 2, going as far as making a video to call out Valve on their poor efforts regarding the bots and cheaters. This is amazing to see, and Muzok has a huge voice, even bigger than before. His outreach is crazy, and knowing that he's supporting Team Fortress 2 is also great. I do wish he made more TF2 content, but if he's not enjoying it, then he's not enjoying it. And he's been extremely successful with Fortnite. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's just hope I don't end up joining this graveyard too. To avoid that, subscribe if you enjoyed and come back next year for an update. Peace.